Thank you, choir. Today I'm inviting you to come on a journey with me about our own value and how we can end up valuing ourselves as lesser during these times and exploring how donating and volunteering and how everything we do can have equal value. Once upon a time, we were all kids. We didn't earn a living. And what few dollars we got, we spent on candies and toys. But it is easy to remember from a young age being told in advertisements about engagements, love, and gifts, that the more you spent, the more you cared. I remember the first birthday party I went to, feeling the guilt about what I could spend. Because this message had already been ingrained in my head at the age of seven. I was always a giver. Yes, I did like receiving things, but as much as possible, I wanted to show others that I cared through giving. I would make coupons for full spa experiences, make homemade salts, bath bombs, cookies, and cakes, and when given the chance, I would donate money to those in need. But I never liked having my gifting be quantified because it felt like I was being judged by what was in my pocket, not what was in my heart. I don't know about you, but sometimes all of these quantifications, what level of donor you were, made me hesitant to donate at all. When I didn't have much to give, and it encouraged me to look elsewhere, like here, but I never stopped giving. Donating has always been one of my favorite things to do. And over time, I've realized no amount of money is too little or too great. Just make sure that you are also taking care of yourself. The holidays are a time when a lot of people get into debt and you are worth more than long-term dues. And maybe I've always known no little is too little. My dad used to make us put a dime a week into a sharing box. And every Christmas, we'd bring our piggy banks here full of 52 dimes, so each, so about 104 dimes equaling to $10.40. Thank you to whoever was counting those <laughs> dimes. You had a lot of work on your hands. But that is how I learned to be gentle generous when I was seven. At the age of 10, my grandmother gave me a chance to give part of my Christmas gift, and I gave half of it to buy goats for a family through World Vision. So as an adult, when I didn't have a job, I realized I could volunteer, and that volunteering was worth just as much as money, even more at times. When I was making some money, I thought carefully on how I wanted to use it. I kept a change jar, and every weekend I'd bring a toonie here to church. But at this point, I'd forgotten some of what I learned when I was younger. I'd kind of feel guilty that I wasn't bringing more. I'd forgotten that even a toonie is something. So why is it so hard, especially now around the holidays when everyone is asking for something, to feel good about what we are doing? And how can we treat ourselves better? I call it the expectations conundrum. Today, the day after Remembrance Day, sometimes feel like, feels like, forget Remembrance and go Christmas crazy day, when all the holiday ads start appearing everywhere. It may unofficially start before Remembrance Day, but it feels like Remembrance Day is the all clear threshold. It's a beautiful time, with lots of kindness and generosity, but also with anxiety and deal-crazy behavior, which can be summed up by Black Friday, 
where people have been known to trample others and play tug-of-war to get the best deals on items that will be forgotten by February. It's a dichotomy of human nature with a consumeristic twist. <laughs> now, I'd be lying if I didn't say that I did half of my Chris do half of my Christmas shopping on Black Friday weekend, but that only leads me to think that I'm just part of another piece of this holiday puzzle, part of the 25% of Canadians looking for some deals. The thing is, we don't really need to be buying as much, and honestly, most of us have more than we need. I'm only 23, and I already know. I have more than enough jewelry for this lifetime, more than enough journals to keep me company on dark stormy nights, more than enough trinkets to cover my shelves, and so do many people. Just go to your closet and confess honestly whether those boxes have been opened in the last six months. Or maybe we're still paying for storage. I, for a storage closet full of items that are sentimental, that is okay. But we could all probably benefit from having fewer things. And fewer items with short with little use or really short lifespans like all the technology and things that are being created these days. But still, we have these, with these advertisements, we are still bombarded with this information of quantity over, over quality, money over care. When, at least I know rationally, we benefit from having more longer lasting items and fewer rooms of our dwellings taken up by items in storage. Why are those ugly sweaters and cheap slippers compelling me to purchase them for a single day of use once a year? Once. I guess I still feel the pull, the expectations conundrum from within, and it's something I have to challenge, to challenge the fear. This expectation conundrum is this favorite thing that happens in my mind and many others. The whole, what do I expect that others expect from me? Taking apart these expectations, maybe we're all just looking at each other and trying to discern what they're thinking and adding our own thoughts and judgments. After all, we are kind of prone to assuming a lot, filling in those blanks at the end of the sentence. But I know each of us is trying to balance not getting too much with not getting too little. We're just trying to show that we care however we can, and we're trying not to drown in those 150 emails we got yesterday telling us to buy something on sale to show how much we love others. Or maybe if we take this apart even more, it comes down to, what do I expect from myself this holiday? The answer, probably too much. When was the last time you told yourself that you were enough? That you are giving all and that you are doing all that you can? For that matter, when was the last time you asked yourself what do you, what would bring you joy? If it's been a while, maybe it's time to come back to yourself. Practice some self-compassion and discover internally what we need to discover. Maybe it's time to reflect on what we already have. The key is remembering. Remembering what meant, what things were meaningful to you. Think back to those meaningful gifts. What were they? For me, the gifts with meaning were the small things that I knew had so much love and time and thought put into them. The little things like a nice spoon holder for the stove top because my partner knows I love cooking and a donation in my name to support families in need because that is something I genuinely care about. And, have always and I've always appreciated those handmade items on a different level 
because I feel like you can really see a person shining through their creation. I love those handmade cards because I love how genuine they are, how real they feel versus a fancy Hallmark card with a pre-written statement. I'm sure many, if not all of you, feel similarly. And let's just be honest, a little children's creation is the best. It feels like you can treasure those gifts forever, and I have to times make sure I don't keep every single drawing my stepdaughter gives to me, lest I start hoarding papers. Maybe in this light, it's time to return to those more childish ways, but as an adult, to make those crafts and skills and make gifts, to make little coupon books for your partner with things like free chores or positivity. We could all use some more of those positive messages. We can create so much ourselves, add so much personality, even if you might not be the craftiest person yourself, tools like Vistaprint can bring your ideas to life. And it's quite fun and relatively inexpensive. And this is something that we can kind of take pride in and then make our focus more about us as a group and our family and less about buying a bunch of little things. And another one of those little great things we can do together is giving back, oh, oops. <laughs> so what if we expected less and communicated that? What if we told each other that we were just wanted to have a potluck, homemade gifts, and maybe a stocking? Would that be enough? Or maybe we just get the kids gifts this year, as some families choose, or firmly say nothing, or just donations in our names. Maybe we take a moment to talk with our chosen families, talk about how we want to celebrate ourselves and each other this year, give back, and how we want to embrace love this winter, and maybe how we want to embrace those other complicated emotions like grief, because those also come up at this time, and it's not always just joy that we feel. We don't always have to be joyful. We just need to know that we're here for each other and that we all want to be supportive. So how do we do this? Well, we talk. And maybe we decide to do more experiences and experiences more life together. One of those experiences that we can all do and with the family is being able to give back to community. I find being able to volunteer time and skills to nonprofit organizations such as this church, a meaningful way to feel good while doing good. Public speaking, playing the piano, cooking food, those are both passions and gifts I can use and have used over the years here. I don't remember Christmas 2013, but I do remember cooking and helping serve food for our Yo-Ho-Ho Christmas dinner here, and it was one of my favorite experiences that I'll never forget. Some moments with my favorite moments with my family have been in joint volunteering efforts, like going to Winnipeg Harvest. Those few hours of fun effort on our own part make a world of difference to the organizations that we volunteer for, and you don't feel that impact in your heart, but again, you. And you do feel that impact from your, in your heart. But again, please don't do everything. Don't wear yourself out. Choose a few things and give them your all. And that way you'll be healthy and happy as you continue onwards. So let's start working towards our better year this year. Let's start today. So I want everyone here to know that you have talent and you are capable in so many ways. I want you to take a moment and let that sink in. You don't need to be told by marketers what your worth is. That your worth is your dime or where you spend it. You are your worth. You are your success however you define it. Money doesn't have to be the full story, and nor is it. You are not what you earned, nor how you spend. 
You are what you create and you bring into this world in spirit, heart, and in person. So what do we want to do this year? Do we want to create homemade decorations, cutting up snowflakes with the kids? Do we want to start brewing our own teas, sitting next to our virtual fireplaces? Do we want to start what music and new ideas can we bring into our homes? What new life can we bring to these cold, out, cold days? Well, some of us get a tree, but not all of us can get a real tree, but maybe we just get a branch and bring some, bring some outdoors inside. Let us work with those around us to create the best, less, least stressful holiday experience. To, to date. First, let's start off with some gratitude. Let us be grateful for ourselves and our friends, our chosen families, and our amazing communities. Let us be grateful for our fresh water from Shoal Lake, our food, our food grown across North America and beyond that's brought to our tables here. Let us breathe deeply and appreciate all of the trees we have growing here around our sanctuary in Winnipeg and in Manitoba. Let us recenter. Let your mind be free and all those creative energies flow. And maybe we make those creative energies part of our everyday, less part of our anxiety and more part of creation. And all of our options here are perfectly good. It's okay to not want anything to holidays, to say I love the cards, I love the food, but my home is full and all we need is love. It's okay, also okay to buy gifts for people just because, as long as we aren't giving with expectations from others, then we find ourselves more free to do what we want. And what and find what we find most valued during the holidays and enjoy this minute of warmth, kindness, and caring in the arguably too cold to handle winter, winters in Winnipeg. It is in these times when we open our minds and open our hearts that we find ourselves. We find ourselves trying to figure out the world and our place here. We find ourselves wanting to give support to those we appreciate around us and willing to receive an inf the influence of the world. We rediscover our own childlike wonder and our ability to create. So let us create together. Let us give together. And let us make this season our most memorable season yet, with less stress and more love. So today, as you, as you pack your day and receive all those promotional emails, all those pleas for your money, I hope that you can be more mindful about what you want to do this year, who you want to give to, and how you want to receive. And I hope that you know in your heart, no amount is too small and no amount is too large. What you have to give is always valuable in the eyes of the beholders. And we can all make a difference in our own and others' lives. Now I, I invite everyone to join in singing our closing hymn, 168, One More Step. <laughs> 